Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking to some of my favourite people and an old friend, Daniel O'Donnell. How are you? Alex, I'm great. Thank you. It is so nice to talk to you again. And you've got this brand new CD out. We do this every year. It's two CDs and a DVD called Stand Beside Me. And it's really what you do best. You connecting with your fans. You have mastered that art, haven't you? Well, I hope so. I enjoy it immensely. And I suppose this collection is is lovely for myself because you know I've spent my life performing live and and every so often we do a live recording not too many but um this is certainly a, a lovely package to have you know with the, with the CDs and the DVD it, it's as good as well it's the next best thing to be in at the show it's so interesting I run a website which is basically a fan website I put people like you up and Cliff and Michael Ball and all these other people who have extraordinary following and you're number one you have more fans visit your material on my website than anyone else have you worked out why what it is between you and your fans that creates such a special connection well, you know, I don't know other than that they're always pleasant to meet. You know, I no matter what I'm doing, uh, you know, if it's anything they can get to, they're there. And it's tremendous support, you know, if you're doing TV shows or, or whatever it might be, be it that there's five or ten or a hundred of them that come, they have no idea the lift that it gives to me. I try to tell them, you know, that it it makes it so much easier for me when I'm in a TV studio and there's a few of the the, the, the stalwarts there. You know that they're on your side and you just can be that much better. Uh, so they give an awful lot to me. That's all I can say. I want to go a bit serious if we can for a moment. It's been a tough year for me. I lost an uncle earlier in the year and yesterday a friend of mine from Loose Women, we lost uh, Linda Bellingham who was a stunning person. I know you've had a tough year as well. Let's just cover what's happened to you since we last spoke. Firstly, are you okay? Yes, I'm doing fine, thank God. And we're we're all doing very well. We're, we're, We're lucky, I suppose. Whereas, you know, we wouldn't have chosen all this past year. Uh, you know, Magella, ha, of course, is fine. She's finished her cancer treatment, her surgeries, and everything is over. And she's in very good form. Thank God. And it looks like everything is, you know, I know everything. We know everything's clear. So please, God, that's how it'll stay. Um, and, uh, of course, her father died uh, just a year past in October, he died on the 15th of October last year. And my mother died in May. Uh, my mother had lived a long life. In July, if she had lived, she would have celebrated her 95th birthday. So it's a great age to get to, although when it's your mother, it's not that old, if you know what I mean. But we're very aware that that we did have a great long time with her. She was very well, really, up till not long before she died although she had failed a little in the last year mentally she was perfect and even up to the last night before she died she was f- talking to us and and keeping keeping with us so we have a lot to be grateful for and we have great memories of her and um, that's as much as we can we can hope for What conclusions have you come to in the last year about life and staying positive and waking up in a morning and finding a reason to get through your day? Where have you got your strength from? Well, I think knowing that, you know, when people pass away, that that they're gone to a better place somewhere that that whatever difficulties they had in this world are nothing, that any pain they had in this world is nothing. And that's my belief. I I believe strongly that that there's a there's a a a God there that that accepts us all, whatever imperfections we might have. He knows everyone. We don't even need to disclose them to him because he knows them because he made us. And knowing that that's what's waiting on my mother and Magella's father and everybody else that we love that has gone, is a great comfort. Um, in relation to, I suppose, Magella's illness, we have we have found great strength in the support of people, in the goodness of people, and 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 
just, I suppose, whereas you wouldn't cho- choose, you know, for, for anybody to have cancer, um, you realise what people mean to you and the power of prayer and the power of, of all all that people uh, reach out to you and them, them kind of time. So um, we, we, we've we had more good out of the year than we have bad, if you can appreciate that. Is she your rock or are you hers? Oh, I think at different times, I suppose, the pendulum swings. And uh, she has been terrific through this, I have to say, that <clears throat> she has been stronger for everybody around her than they needed to be for her, you know. So she's she's come through it tremendously well, there's no doubt about it. And, uh, you know, she's she's got... I suppose found a lot about herself through it too. So, you know, in life, everything happens for a reason. You're such a gentle man and a gentleman, Daniel. Did you ever get angry at any point or frustrated or wonder why or did you just accept it for what it was? Oh, no, I I suppose through this, I think we did accept it and just believe that, that there was going to be a positive result. That's what we believed, and thank God we've been lucky so far, and we believe that we will be lucky. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's so many, as we see with, with, with Linda, you know, they don't make it, but they touch so many, and I know it's a small comfort to their family at, at such a sad time, but I'm sure as 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 the days and weeks and i suppose months passed they will realize how many has have been touched by her story you know and whereas their loss is great the comfort i'm sure that they'll get from the, the thousands of people that will will send some kind of signal to them that they've been touched i think they will they will be lifted up by it Track 13 on this new album, Stand Beside Me, is called How Great Thou Art. And I know many of your fans feel you're their best friend. And do you realise how many people you've got through difficult times with your music? Do you know, I suppose if the music has helped people, I feel very privileged. I'm doing something that I love. And if in life you can make things better for anybody, then you've... You've been very lucky to have been given the opportunity and, and, and I know I've been lucky. Track three on this album is called Flying With Angels. I thought it had a special meaning. Maybe I was reading more into it after the year that you've had and the year that we've all had. Um, are certain songs difficult to sing when you're going through troubled times or do you go into a different zone? An odd time. An odd time a song can just hit you. Um, but... If you can get through them once, then you'll get through them the next time. Flying with Angels, certainly when I found this song, it was given to me by the writer, I realised that um, I loved it. And it it seems to just, you know, give great hope, you know, what 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 is after all this and and it's it's my belief i'm not saying that everybody needs to believe what i believe but i'm comforted by my beliefs i've said this to you before and we're covering old ground in a way but other than cliff i've never known another performer on this earth that has such dedicated fans the reaction to you seems to get stronger and stronger you give a lot of yourself i mean the first few minutes of this interview we've talked very personally do you think that's important that people really know you and through good and bad you're there for each other and you tell them about it well i suppose you know we must realize that we're all given a, a position in life and um, a lot of people are going through what celebrities go through. And sometimes people living, you know, an everyday life feel that they're totally on their own. And maybe if they can relate to somebody that they admire or somebody that they enjoy be it an actor, a singer, whatever, and they see that maybe they're going through something the same. Maybe, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but maybe it makes you feel that you're not alone. 
Do you sometimes look around you at who are the most famous in show business and who are earning millions and millions of pounds a year and hold your head? Because it seems like the values that you hold in the business are not necessarily taken by others now, are they? They're almost shameless. Do you, you, you don't get involved in any of the nonsense, do you? You're never seen coming out of clubs, let alone drunk or falling out of them. It, it's all changed, hasn't it? Well, that's maybe for some, but I think not for all. You know, there's a lot of decent people there too. And, and, and you know, I don't know that anybody is not decent, I suppose. Sometimes we all have to find ourselves. And, you know, that, that's, that's we, the one thing, I suppose, in life that, that we need to be very careful of is that we don't judge too harshly because you never know how tight somebody's shoes is until you try them on. You know, and and we can look from afar at things and and you know criticize or make a judgment, but you really don't know what is pushing that situation. You know, so I think there's, you know, I think that a lot of people maybe take a wee while to find themselves, but but you know you you have to go a lot of roads sometimes if you're not if you don't know your way. But eventually you get there. I guess it's choices, isn't it? And we all make those. When I look at your career, you've made so many smart choices. Do you feel there's someone guiding you? I mean, your mum passed on this last year. Do you feel like she's still got a hand on your shoulder, sort of guiding you through those tough decisions and tough times and decisions you just make every day? Well, I would say uh, not even guide me. I'd say she's pushing me (laughs) because that's what she was like. You know, she would want the best for everybody. And she'd be pushing you to the right gate, do you know? This might be the stupidest question I've ever asked you, Daniel, but how proud of you was she on a scale of one to ten? Did you ever have that discussion or was it unsaid? I could was unspoken, but I would always feel it. She was so proud of every all of the family, you know, down to the weest or the smallest grandchild. There was a... the the. the the oldest great grandchild, her name is Sarah, and Sarah would sing about it. And my mother would want Sarah to sing at every opportunity. You know, she was only, you know, she's only about eight or nine now, I would say. Uh, what do we say? When was she born? Yes, she'll be nine now. She was born in 2005. So she'll be nine now, and, or just nine there past in October on the 5th. And um, my mother would just be pushing her to sing so my mother was proud of everybody and what they did you know and uh, she she would like everybody to to do their best when you wake up in the morning what pressure is there on you on a show day to sound like daniel o'donnell do you get neurotic about that do you worry that the voice will be there i mean after all these years it sounds on this album still as pure and as beautiful in tone as it ever was well, do you know, we, I think all singers are the same. Well, maybe not all, but certainly a lot of the ones that I meet. You're all where you wake up and you think, oh, <clears throat> have a bit of a, uh, my coffin. <laughs> you know, you're always wanting, and, and I've spoken to, funny enough, about Cliff about that too, you know. And, you know, you'd be thinking, oh, the, your voice is not as good. But somehow you always pull through, or generally there's an odd time, I suppose, maybe a struggle. But uh, thanks be to God, we're, we're not too bad. I don't know whether you want to comment about it. I have a huge respect and admiration for Cliff like yourself. It's sad, isn't it, the way that the media these days are willing to bring you down with no proof, no evidence, no court case. I guess you just want to send support to Cliff, do you? Absolutely, and I would stand by him as a friend. You know, I I have great admiration as a fan for many years and as a friend for a lot of years too. And I suppose what all of his friends were uh, disappointed with was the way that his name was exposed at such an early stage in the investigation. If it had come to the point that there was grounds for this to be a legitimate claim, which still there's no grounds for that, then, you know, you you have to accept that somebody's name is to go out there. But it, it, Cliff, we shouldn't even know yet that Cliff was ever investigated, you know, and and that's that's what we dis- disagree with. Any allegation, and Cliff would be the first to say it, should be investigated properly to be, you know, legitimised or 
you know, disregarded, whichever is the right result. And um, I think he would agree with that too. But certainly not to bring somebody's name down with no uh, grounds for it. And the BBC should be absolutely ashamed of themselves putting that helicopter over his house. But there you go. We send him our love and good for him. He's back on tour, as will you be. Um, I know you're going to take a little time off now. You deserve it. Thank you so much for talking to me again. This new CD box set is out now. Two CDs and a DVD. Stand Beside Me is the latest release by Daniel O'Donnell out in November. It is always an honour and a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for your time, Daniel. Thanks, Alex, and thanks to everybody who's uh, listening. Uh, hope you're all well and look forward to seeing you on our return in 2016. Hope to see you soon. Thanks, Daniel. Bye-bye.